Next, I'd like to introduce Tim Shepard. He has over 25 years of experience in the HF alkyl industry. He has extensive knowledge of the HF alkylation process and the technology that supports these units across the globe. Tim's expertise in this field range from refining to designing and licensing. He has personally been on site to audit and provide advice to over 40 HF units around the world. Welcome, Tim. Welcome. Um, my name is Tim Shepard. I'm the Vice President for Technical Services for HF Alkylation Consultants. As Betsy had met mentioned, I'd spent uh, most of my career in this industry and worked uh, for a number of years for the licensor of this technology as a principal chemical engineer before coming to work for HF Alkylation Consultants. Refineries and other industries hire our company to consult and uh, advise on the process, optimization, risks, how to handle corrosion issues, and other operating challenges, but it isn't just the motor fuels alkylation industry that consults our company. Also, uh, some common products that you use in your house, like uh, laundry detergent to wash your clothes or even clean your dishes, uses hydrofluoric acid, in fact, anhydrous hydrofluoric, and we consult on those companies as well. But what is modified HF or alkylation? Maybe uh, you're, you're here and you're just saying, what, what is this? Is this something I can even relate to? Well, MHF, you see these acronyms, MHF and AHF are acronyms for uh, modified hydrogen fluoride and AHF would be anhydrous hydrogen fluoride, which anhydrous is just this complex way of saying there's no water. It's a neat or pure component. And they're all like sulfuric acid. They're among the few viable catalysts that are available to make alkali. And its history, it's a very old technology. It was uh, a very <laughs> urgent need that the U.S. federal government funded to invent this process to make high-octane gasoline that could be used in propeller-driven war aircraft. Those high-compression engines need that product. And over the years, it's been, uh, its kind of popularity has resurfaced with the phase-out of lead, which we all agree was probably a good thing, and also MTBE and ETBE processes that were used uh, octane enhancers. MHF really, or hydrogen fluoride, as far as used to alkylate, is really an elegant process because it's simple, it's simple to use, and it can be regenerated or brought fresh really easily. The contaminants can be removed, which is not the case with the other types of catalysts that have been discovered that you can alkylate with. The reaction is really simple. Um, you take two fairly low-grade LPGs, or liquefied petroleum gases, kind of similar to what you might have in your cigarette lighter. And that LPG, uh, two or three different forms of that typically, are put into a vessel or a reactor. It's kind of just a pipe, to keep it simple. And uh, in the presence of hydrogen fluoride or sulfuric acid, and as what happens is those real smaller molecules that readily can vaporize, like propane, they combine to make a longer molecule that's gasoline. And really, alkylate, it's true to say it's a true green gasoline because the easiest way to describe it is if you put it in a glass, it looks like water, and it stays in that glass. It doesn't weather off because it's paraffinic or straight chain, we say in the industry. It's not an aromatic. So it's a very good quality fuel for both the environment as well as a blend stock to make high octane gasoline. And really, it is essential to make carb gasoline, which is the highest standard in the world. And I'm old enough, unfortunately, that I can reflect back when the television showed smog over the city of LA. And carb gasoline, in fact, alkylate, is a, a major contributor to the fact that that's no longer the case. There are other catalysts, yes. Sulfuric is probably the most prevalent. In fact, the ratio is about 50-50 worldwide of alkylation units that use sulfuric or use hydrogen fluoride to make alkylate. 
solid catalysts we've known for a very long time that we can catalyze with rhenium and platinum, other metals, kind of like your catalytic converter in your car uses platinum to catalyze the exhaust. We can catalyze with those. The problem is it's exceptionally difficult to refresh the catalyst. In fact, it has not been able to be successfully commercially applied on large scale. Also, we hear a lot about this ionic liquids. I actually worked with the licensor on the development very recently of some of this technology. And the best way to kind of describe it is an ionic liquid is a, is a, a room temperature melting salt or chloride. And it can be described as like a super acid because it really is very sensitive for this reaction. Still, there's a lot of research that needs to be continued to prove its viability, and it's in many senses in its infant stages. And it takes decades, often, for some of these technologies to be proven. So I thought this bullet point I added here because I thought, why explore alternatives? You know, if MHF is so safe and it's great, why look at anything else? Well, isn't that really the innovation in all of industry? In fact, don't we always seek continuous improvement. And I think that the Torrance refinery, I've been in, Betsy had mentioned 40, I've actually been in, uh, last count was 52 HF units, there's approximately 135 of them worldwide, including this unit. And uh, I, I believe that the Torrance unit here has taken steps that I have not seen in any other unit worldwide to really ensure the safe operation of this chemical. And I use the illustration, I've got a new iPhone 7, and it's already obsolete, right? So we're always looking to improve, and I guess it's iPhone 8 now, so what, what we're supposed to get. So a little bit about how MHF works. I'm not gonna go into this in real detail, but it's pretty simple that it forms a strong bonding, a hydrogen bond, and when you think about HF, the H stands for hydrogen. It's hydrogen fluoride, and it has a propensity to wanna grab other things. And so if you've only heard part of the story, like I went to the, um, your communities, I don't live in this community, but I went to the meeting the other night and was very appreciative to hear all the outpouring of concern, but also to hear sort of half the story. And I, I thought of an illustration that was actually shared with me, and I've, I believe it's a good illustration, that if you were told, for instance, that one of your neighbors or some in your community were feeding their children liquid hydrogen, you might think, is that possible? That's what I would think, right? I was like, well, I'm not sure that's possible. But if you were, you might think, oh, that doesn't sound good. But then if you heard they were not just feeding them liquid hydrogen, but also liquid oxygen, which is kind of rocket fuel, right? Doesn't sound good. But you all are smart enough to know is what I'm talking about is H2O, which we all depend on for life. But if we've only heard half the story, it's similar as an analogy to hydrogen fluoride being modified. Because the modifier is a component that changes the mixture, just the same as hydrogen and oxygen in the right ratio changes their, their ultimate component, what they become. And so with that said, modified, it truly works and it's been demonstrated um, with the experimentation that isn't readily available to the public for all the reasons that go along with proprietary inventions. Also, it was spoke that, that the additive was never tested at low concentrations. I remember I heard that this was discussed and uh, that the air reduction factor, that ARF number, was kind of just made up or extrapolated, when in fact this is quite far from the actual truth. The available public documents or the patents that anyone can search on Google and find, there's a very small portion of the actual research that's available and that the Torrance Refinery has access to, and we have uh, poured through those documents numerous hours. And another uh, point that was brought out is that these barriers don't actually work, where these barriers are some kind of makeshift type of device. And a little a look at them here, you can see there's uh, some barriers underneath the pans. I haven't tried this to see how Jaswina did it. Oh, nice. So you see the pans that are underneath the settler vessels. 
And then you see here are the flange guards, and there's one on the table over here that you can see real clearly that device. People say, well, how's that going to work? And a good illustration or a way that you can appreciate the understanding of that is if you were to hold a can of spray paint, and I did this in my garage to make sure it works, so, and I used a can of black spray paint, and if you spray it out into the air, the paint goes out as, as a vapor and doesn't settle on anything. At least, I don't think so. It probably settled on my truck or the driveway or spotted something that my wife's going to tell me about. But it seems to just disappear into the atmosphere. But if you hold a piece of cardboard right in front of the spray nozzle, and I did this, as soon as the paint impinges that surface or barrier, it quickly condenses and, in fact, pools and runs down the piece of cardboard. It's very similar, the action of these barriers, and test data has proven that they're very effective, exceptionally effective, especially when in conjunction with the modifier. And industry-wide now, this is a fairly new learning. In the nearly 30 years I've been working with this, there's very few units that have adopted it, and certainly Torrance has led the charge in this research. So um, in conclusion, I think as mentioned, the Torrance refinery has really developed many of the industry's highest standards. They've led the charge in many regards for improvements and innovation. Also, um, the current alternative technologies need to, if, if that is what's really being explored and persisted and pushed, I invite you all to ask those questions because the alternatives have much greater societal risks and impacts in many, many regards. So modified HF in conclusion has been operated here at the Torrance Refinery without an off-site incident its entire history. Thank you for your consideration.